Hello and welcome to another episode of Knocked Conscious with Mark Poles. Today I'm going to share an interview with a gentleman named Daniel Holly. He lives in Bristol, UK, and he has a podcast titled The Social Cohesion Podcast. We were going to initially going to talk about that, but uh, this week was a really strong week of racial tensions in the United States, and Daniel had a lot to share about that. So I'm just going to be quiet, send it to the interview, and here it is. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Not Conscious. I'm uh, sitting across the pond from a gentleman named Daniel Holly. He has a podcast called the Social Cohesion Podcast. Is that correct, Daniel? That is correct. Excellent. Welcome, Daniel. And I just want to let all my listeners know that the only reason Daniel's actually on here is because he has a British accent. And that instantaneously legitimizes every podcast that you could ever have. So thanks for coming on, Daniel. No, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Mark. Looking forward to this. So, so we met, or we we talked once before, and it was about a month or so ago. A lot of shit has happened since, and na- look, very recently. So please share. I would like, let's get right into it, because yeah, obviously. Yeah, let's just go. <laughs> go. <laughs> so tell me about what's on your mind, what, uh, what, you know, what events that happened. Paint it out, you know, paint it how you see it from your perception, mm. and we'll go from there. What's on my mind? Mark, you're going to open up. Oh, you might <laughs> open up the floodgates. Ah, okay. So if I start with, actually, it was a comment I made um, on social media recently. And I think that's probably why that's playing on me at the moment, because that's the most recent thing I mentioned, was there's, I, and I see this from all, all different sides, this element of, if you don't think the way I think, then you are uneducated, you are stupid, you are not conscious, you are not doing this. And actually, I, I'm I'm guilty of this in my own field of work. I see and hear myself saying stuff about people being like, you know, they're not conscious, they're not self-aware, they're not doing this and that. Da, da, da. But what, yeah. what recent events has really brought to my mind, and honestly, it really is truly, truly terrifying, actually more so, is what what that does is it sets a tone of underestimating and therefore underplaying and undervaluing the service that a person can bring in a conversation when they have a judgment that the other person's capable, capability um, in, in their thinking is stunted. And yeah. to actually to actually flip it on its head and say, what if, what if the conversations that took place took place in a way that suggested that people actually were not stupid. They have that. And bear in mind, when we say stupid, but it's not that they don't have the information or like you said, you know, they they are ignorant and they're not in a horrible way. They just don't have the information. What if, right. what if a conversation would take place where actually they had the capacity to learn and it's just finding out how they how they were to learn. And that that's step one, right? That's first the first thing that comes to my head because the information is always there and the information has always been there for right. people to really build. And I'll be careful because I mean I, I, I can't even I, and I think I'll, I'll I'll fail at this as the conversation goes on, Mark. I'm gonna fail at this, but I'm trying uh, to be I'm trying no to be fail. really, really <laughs> like diplomatic about this. <laughs> Do not really hey, <laughs> real quick I, I okay so i should have called it the real quick podcast because we do the tangent thing yep. but uh, just to clarify i just did a two and a half hour um expose i had a very close friend who was molested by the catholic church Damn. so we did a two and a half hour uh podcast on that on friday i'm mm. still recovering mm. but <laughs> my point is be brash be bold because these are real honest conversations so please I, I don't censor. You censor mm. yourself. And I agree with you um, with your point about mm. that. What I would what I always thought is like it's on us to learn and be curious. And I get frustrated sometimes when I don't feel like people want to learn. You know, yeah, they oh, deliberately God, yeah. put their, their head in the yeah. So <laughs> but go ahead. I, I, I just want to jump in there for yeah, a second. No, 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 I appreciate it. Thank you. But the, the thing is as I as I work this through my head, I can hear there's there there can be if I'm to go brash, 
there therefore can be a suggestion that the, the, the things that I'm saying only apply to one type of person when actually what I'm saying applies across the board. It's not a this is a message just for these people, because no matter what's uh, in terms of what's happening right now, there certainly is a person that I could definitely a type of person I could definitely be speaking to right now. And that is why people absolutely, like, absolutely go in on that. But with regards to everything, everything going on collectively, there is no person who's innocent from catching their own accountability of how they could do better. Yes. And so when I talk about this stuff, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, we could, have a, we could have a conversation about what's going on in America right now. And we probably will at some point really go in. Sure. But to start yeah. off, my thoughts are simply, we, we really want to be able to acknowledge a person's ability to learn and listen. Yes, there absolutely are times where, and again, I said this in another post, where you're, it's, it's like trying to talk to an addict who doesn't want to not be an addict. It's like trying to talk right. to a serial killer who does not have the capacity to show remorse. It's like trying right. to talk to a person who doesn't comprehend the ideas of empathy, of, um, of different perspectives, of accountability. Those conversations, to me, just don't, I, I honestly don't have them. I just don't have them, right? Yeah. If you see yeah. something, you come across someone who's not wanting to learn, don't try and teach them. There is no, there is only energy lost right. in that kind of conversation. Right. Whereas I think what does it harm, um, and this is all a response to someone saying, oh, I think we just need to talk about this because they were like, oh, writing's not the way it's going to work. And I was like, shut up. So <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't, I, 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 I don't agree with writing personally. Okay. I understand there's nonviolence because America is afforded the greatest freedom of all the freedom assembly, freedom of speech. That is the only country that it's afforded in. Um, unfortunately, yeah, but it's practice really it grows. Clearly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's, please. It's, I, like, I yeah, live here. I, yeah. <laughs> it's really badly done. Are, and, and what I've noticed is I, it, as I've grown this, uh, I'm, I believe you're, I think I did a, episode five parts one and two on friday so i believe this is a sixth not conscious group you know individual recording yeah. but uh, there's an old native american proverb that says you can't wake someone who's pretending to sleep mm -hmm. because that's the ignorance right it's like uh stupidity or is the deliberate cultivation of ignorance it's like almost you know by intentionally looking the other way not just not knowing mm. but intentionally looking the other way yeah, but please, please continue. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but that, that's exactly it. And I think the reason that the reason that it's it's harmful to suggest that other people are dumb and other people have a mental deficiency or whatever, which is, an, again, a narrative I've seen. And it's, again, from all angles, is that what it does is it actually diminishes, uh, diminishes, ah, diminishes the very conscious and very purposed and very um, intentional actions, decisions, uh, and executions of even the individual's behavior, as well as mm -hmm. governmental behavior, institutionalized yeah. behavior. These well, then we start are voting, not an act voting, we vote not. away, right? Yeah. We, we are voting the way, you know, in a certain way, putting a certain person into a position, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's where the government kind of becomes a mirror of the society. Yeah, precisely. And so I think it takes it takes a level of us having to understand that we got we've got to it, it's that whole thing like know your enemy right really know your enemy yeah. and if you are going to go out there and just go right they're all dumb they're all stupid and they've got this and I because I, I went through this process myself growing up from a young age I started to look at this and and I I was forced to because I had to question why. I was being spoken to differently, why I was the one getting certain jokes that other people weren't getting. And I mean, being on the receiving end of certain jokes that other people were not on the receiving end. Right. Of. You were, you were the vic, in, in, in essence, a victim or the punchline or I the, was the punchline. Yeah. The, yeah. The joke, right? So I yeah. was forced to look into this and going, right, what, what is going on here? Why is this behavior um, happening? So you start to look at, you know, psychology and behaviors. And then of course you, you eventually get down to the identifier that's put you at the brunt of these jokes and the punchline. And so you, you, you naturally will start looking into it. And yeah, you could, you, I did come to a conclusion at one point, And again, I was very young, so still naive, thinking, oh, they must be like a, a, a mental deficiency, right? And there must be something wrong right. in their brain. And I sat with that for a long time because I thought, yeah, that's got to be it. And maybe they just need some mental health work and blah, blah, blah. And, 
And I, 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 as I grew up, I was like, the more I learned about it, the more I understood it. I was like, nah, no, these people really know what the hell they're doing. They know, yeah. they know what they're doing and they yes. do it. They, and that means while people are there just pointing fingers and calling them dumb and stuff, they're like, yeah, call us dumb because we know right. what we're doing and we know that we're going to still be able to get away with it, which is why they continue to do it. And, and do you know what? This again, still stands, whether it's regards to racism, classism, you could put it under ageism, you could put it into um, being anti-trans, any of these things. People know exactly what they're doing, yeah. right? Well, I, once again, to that point, the last podcast I did mm -hmm. was an expose in the Catholic Church and mm -hmm. molestation. Yeah. Um, everyone knew. They intentionally moved people around. Yeah. They intentionally swept it under the rug. Mm -hmm. This was this is a an organization that's supposed to love and you know provide us peace, mm. and it did all those things right over all those years. Yeah. So, but that's just an example, right? To your point, um, I, I felt the same way. I I I have a higher you know capacity for curiosity. Mm -hmm. And it frustrates me sometimes when people, I don't see that like the ignorance, but it's a deliberate ignorance. It's not, yeah, not knowing it's, it's knowing that there's another answer and not even addressing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where it goes from there then is the, 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 the challenge. And this is where I think I was trying. Yeah. I was trying to, to mediate myself. Cause actually, to be honest, there's a lot, there is a lot of bad energy in me right now and this week shit my like, friend it's even harder because it's harder to really feel like there's mobilization you could do because you're you're indoors you're, you're pretty much yeah. and, indoors right now and this week just so you know i work with energy and i have other stuff that mm. i'm sure i'll share later but sure. this week has been probably the most fucked up week i've experienced in a very long time it's, it's mad, just been mad. all over the place. So really quickly, I, that, I understand exactly what you're saying. Would you mind uh, sharing how you heard the news of what happened? Because we haven't talked about what, like, what we're addressing specifically what happened this week. Would you be okay sharing oh, yeah, how no, no. you... Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, and so then we'll the everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go to the specifics of it. So yeah, it was, it was first um, Ahmed Aubrey, um, the reporting of that and how it took so incredibly long and so much work for any kind of action to be taken, any kind of justice to be even looked at um, that, that sparked the first controversy, that sparked that first kind of, okay, we're going to go through this again. Here we go again. Right. Um, and again, for those people who don't know, so uh, Ahmed Aubrey was murdered in February and it took thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people to actually bring attention to the fact that there was even a video of this happening and for justice to be had, which suggests right. it really takes a lot of work for a black person in America to be shot and brought to justice. And, and it also suggests that if that work hadn't been done, that it would have gone unseen and you, again, you right. have to think, how often does that happen? How often does someone just want to flex their bigoted muscles and mm -hmm. commit a heinous, heinous crime and get away with it, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And so and so then that that kind of was the, the match. But the match- can you, then, can you tell me that person's name again? And was that an incident, an incident in the UK? No, this or is, is America. This, this is America. Wait, can you tell me that person? Because obviously, the, this is the George Floyd that happened this week. Yeah, oh, What's yeah, the yeah, yeah. So, no, this, so um, Ormond Aubrey, right? This, yeah. this, that's what I mean. This, this happened in February, but it wasn't brought up until May. This wasn't actually right. a right. thing until okay. recently. So we're talking a few right. months later. I, that, honestly, I had no idea, and I'm I consider myself pretty well informed. So I, that's, that's crazy. That's no, that's that's fair, and and and. and do you know what? I think that also speaks to how things reach people. Is there's a really good oh, the media um, has has control. Sure. But well, um, no, I'm going to challenge that. No, because that that, <laughs> well, that takes I've, away from accountability massively. Well, not account. I'm, what I'm saying is though, it's the people the 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 people who run those things are bigoted, right? And we do get our news from about three main sources. 
Mm-hmm. It's not many, you know, so it's very easy. I believe it's easy to kind of funnel what we see from whoever that is, yeah. right? If that makes yeah. sense. I'm not talking about the accountability part because we're all accountable for every action. Absolutely. Um, but but just the, the you know, being shown it, I guess, or being, mm-hmm. you know, uh, yeah, well, so, known, known for it. Yeah, and so the, re- the reason I don't follow that so much, and again, this could mm-hmm. be another lesson for you, Mark, to be fair. It's In, <laughs> us uk issue too i mean we have different laws and, and rules and regulations and cultures as well mm-hmm. you know um, but please share share your this is yeah. like i said this is your podcast to tell me about you because mm-hmm. the more people know you and get to know you they're going to list tune into what you have to offer because i've listened to your podcast and i found it i found some information very uh i could take away with me and and use cool thank you so what I, what I, when, I, when I hear people point fingers at the media and stuff, yes, the, the media certainly do have a lot of things to account for, definitely. The, the part where I have issue with pointing the finger at the media is, okay, we know that we can curate our own social media feeds. We know that we can actually choose what we see and what we don't see. We know that we can yes. actually tell the algorithms what we would like to see. So if we mm-hmm. want to see more of something on TikTok, Instagram, whatever, then we just have to literally tell it, find the material and like it, engage with it, view it. Right. And the algorithm will go, oh, I see you like this. This, And it, honestly, it's happened with, with when, I, when I use TikTok. When I use TikTok, yeah. right now, TikTok is a powerful machine at the moment in regards to bringing the conversation forward, not in some of the best ways I've seen, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of people making a lot of movements on TikTok right now. And they, they moved away from doing the dances and, you know, the jokes and sure. stuff. A lot of it's, become, it's become an actual news. social uh, or a way to, you know, to have your social uh, issues brought to the forefront. Absolutely. I guess, Absolutely. It's really on fire at the moment. Um, it's awesome. But, yeah. but what I did notice once was I remember I was using it um, at first. And there was some content that I liked where I started seeing that. There was one video I happened to watch that popped up on my feed. And I was like, what's this about? And by the end of the video, I realized that it was something that actually really didn't match or align with my values at all. So I skipped on and I left it. But what was interesting was minutes later, I was starting to get more of those things. Yes. And it was starting to show it to me as if to say, oh, you what? You watched the whole minute of this video. Right? <laughs> so we, right. we're assuming you want to see more. It's not, it's not trying to force any kind of, you know, um, bigoted white supremacist views. It's just going, I noticed you enjoyed this material. Let me, let me show you some stuff that's like this. Right. Mm-hmm. So what I yeah, had to do was I had to then go to back to what I was watching and go, right, let me watch yeah. more of this and this and this to go, no, 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 no. You got me twisted here, TikTok. I I have a philosophy on that and I, I definitely want you to share all yours and I'll I'll counter with what I think's happening. But once again, we don't know. I mean, we're we're speculating here as well. So mm-hmm. I will say that my crazy conspiracy theory stuff is pure speculation, but mm-hmm. you know, I believe it holds water. But please continue. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> So, so basically, um, you're putting yourself in the echo chamber, and all of a sudden, you get something counter to that. Mm-hmm. You click because you happen to click on it, but it assumes that you're clicking. So now that now you're in that echo chamber. Now yeah. you're getting a feed and feed, uh, you know, uh, of the same type of material. Now is yeah. that what's happening? Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that does it happens. Um, I've spotted it happening on all social media platforms I've used, where yeah. what you engage with and what you use, it will complete, uh, will repeat back to you. Does it always get it right? No, but that's because what social media will sometimes do is go, hey, have you looked at this? Or I noticed some of these words also appear in these posts and they may not be aligned in value, but they're just, they've got a lot of the same thing. So let me show you this. Catchphrases, uh, keywords, yeah, things like that. Sure. So, Absolutely. So I will, I mean, for example, um, I, while I'm a coach in my own life, life coach, and performance coach, I love coaching, love the industry, think it's amazing. Um, but I am very much a coach who's open to speaking about identity, right? And the reason that was, was because the coaching industry, as I joined it and saw it, really did mm. not like talking about those things. Okay. And so I, I, I separated myself from that. The coaching industry, as I saw it at the time, was actually really very much stooped in this kind of white-centered, um, privileged idea, an ideal. So I was like, no, that's yeah, not what because... I see coaching. That's not what I see I, I, the industry I... can be. And I think that I think if I may, yeah. uh, if I may possibly put a reasoning to that is, uh, you know, Caucasian white people, I'm middle class white American. 
uh, probably have the am afforded the time and maybe the extra little bit of money to seek extra help in counseling or in motivating or coaching like what you're in. And now more and more people have access to that. But in the beginning, I would guess it was more the affluent, you know, the higher class or upper middle class or so that could afford it. So it kind of became that, right? It became a reflection of the people who are going to see to get counseling and whatnot or, or coaching. Yes. And at the same time, all of the people who, um, did I lose who it? therefore valued it. Um, and sorry, all the people within the industry, I'm not sure if you're still there, Mark, but you've just gone quiet. I'm just going to say that. Um, so you press the hand button to let me know you're still there. But <laughs> when, when you look at all the value bases in coaching and when you look at all of the things in coaching that make it uh, what it is, you can actually see how easy it is to insidiously lay down very, very seasoned white supremacist values that don't actually apply when it comes to what coaching Daniel, is all there, about, buddy? which is about the uplifting and the empowerment of any individual on this planet and the belief that any individual on this planet can make it. But of course, coaching is about taking down barriers. It's about breaking down things that are in our way mentally, psycho psychologically. And for people of color, for marginalized identities, there'll be different barriers that need to be taken down that need to be fully understood and appreciated. And if a coach is out there going, oh, there's no there, color or your sexuality is just the story and the gender gap's not real and da, da, they're not going to be effective in actually helping you dismantle that barrier because they're not going to listen to or understand or hear what it is that you're really, really struggling with. And they're not gonna be able to understand. And next thing you know, you've got coaches out there gaslighting people who have very, very real experiences. So I didn't really sit with that quite so well. And that's why I, I moved on. Initially, I could see it being kind of pointed towards a certain demographic because it was for a certain demographic. Yes, yes, it was. And the, the values of coaching were to represent this idea that anyone could make it, right? And that's what it sat on. Yes. And anyone, regardless of race, religion, color, gender, everything, all the things, right? And yeah. it, it spoke about how nationality didn't need to play a factor. And that's all well and good in regards to understanding the ideal of anyone being able to make it. However, when it comes down to coaching, if you don't go into there, if you go into a conversation not recognizing that a person's nationality can make a difference because of the way that they're governed, a person's sure. nationality can make a, a person's, sorry, race can make a difference because of their perceived challenges psychologically, which is going to be real again for people who are not straight and certainly for people who are non-binary. If you are a coach in that situation, you just think all of those things are arbitrary and made up. You're not going right. to give credit to the very real experiences of marginalized people. Right, absolutely not. In their way, which means you're going to be effectively gaslighting and making it worse uh, for those people, which means it becomes a very exclusive service where coaches yes. will find more success with people who are already privileged because their barriers and boundaries will be automatically respected. Absolutely. Things. And so, yeah, so um, so that was all, that was something that I was like, okay, that's coaching interesting, no. But I'm still- And, and, and really quick on that too, uh, what's interesting is like, we're as humans, right? We, I mean, we are still animal based. We have instincts. Yeah. So the one thing that our subconscious looks for is difference, mm -hmm. right? It's changes in environment, changes in things. When we look at our skin, for example, just as an instinct, right? Yeah. And then you see someone with a different skin, you don't, you just don't, you, you know, that subconscious kicks in. But then it's also culturally, you know, uh, massaged and grown and, and becomes bigotry and racism yeah. and all yeah. these other isms, right? Precisely. Yeah. So having said all of that, um, talking about social media posts, I still get adverts from coaches that I would denounce at the very first thought of them because I know that their work has been built off of this ideal of saying that it's not about race, it's not about gender and da da da, but they have at the same time perpetuated some incredibly harmful lessons and learnings towards those people and done some ridiculous right. things. And I get adverts for these people to be part of their coaching programs and stuff. And I'm like, why are you giving me this? Nothing I say or nothing I look at really relates to this, but I still right. get it. So I have to make a choice to say, stop showing me this ad, right? Yeah. And yes, we, can, we can think it's 
you know, I, I, I respect that everyone will have their idea on this, but to me, I think there's, we can certainly think that we're trying to be forced this element of um, oppressive narratives and stuff like that. And I can understand why that would be the case. But we're talking about a program and an algorithm that has, of course, been set up to follow your behavior. And it's not going to yes. get it right. It's not going to be perfect. We can't expect the technology no. to be perfect, right? right? So mm-hmm. it's, it's going pretty to be good, though. I mean, it's pretty good. Hmm. I mean, in fact, and I know, just, I know it works both listening. ways. <laughs> <laughs> I know it works both ways because I do see posts right. wherein people who have opposing values to my own yes. also end up seeing stuff that does not align with them. They get it too, yes. right? So and, and that's my opinion, okay. actually. It's my opinion that the algorithm does that on purpose to incite conversation to incite engagement Mm -hmm. um that's my personal opinion i'm not saying anyone adopt that but what i I see in the united states is i say i'm left i i'm i'm sorry let's not use politics say i'm red right and everything i look at is red and all of a sudden i get blue stuff all the time Mm -hmm. and that's really just to get me going so i can engage Mm -hmm. it's almost like we're being pulled to be combative in some cases Mm -hmm. uh in my experience in the united states it may be different at, you know, the algorithms may be different for each, depending on where you're at and everything as well. Mm-hmm. But we've always, the biggest thing they want is engagement. Mm-hmm. And the best way to engage is not to agree with you, but to disagree, right? Because mm-hmm. you, you then get in a conversation like, no, you're wrong. No, mm-hmm. you're wrong. That's my opinion. But um, I, I do understand where you're coming from. So please, mm-hmm. uh, please continue. So there's, there's something there you say, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I think maybe you meant it in just that moment and that context. But I still feel this is necessary because I'm seeing this as well. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go off on a, on a tangent here to say oh, this. I'm please. also aware that we haven't actually got to what's taken place this week that has caused all of this. Yes. Um, it doesn't and- matter though, because the conversation needs to happen. Now yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. We'll go with it. We'll it's go not- with it. Uh, this what happened this week was the effect, mm-hmm. not the cause. Right. So we're you're addressing the cause. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um. So first of all, I again, I had this, I remember, again, when I was younger, not wanting to be involved in conversations around politics and wanting to kind of keep politics out of things. Mm-hmm. And there's a hilarious anecdote I'll share in a moment. And it's hilarious, but sad, actually. Um, and then when I started to recognise that my identity was political, that actually all of these things were political, because actually the reason all of these things became a thing. And when I say all of these things, I'm talking about gender identity, sexuality, mm-hmm. race, ethnicity. They're all based on very political decisions. And yes, therefore were all absolutely. constructed by policy. And so correct. And and actually I, I would argue that nothing nothing can really be talked about without it being somewhat political. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to yeah, come to that because well, once again, the policy makers are the politicians. We have culture, we have beliefs, and then we vote on the person that we think reflects our policies the best. Mm-hmm. And then policy happens. I mean, that mm-hmm. unfortunately, we have to have a government or some kind of entity, right? Because mm-hmm. we would not be able to live individually like that. You know, I mean, we are a collective in a way, mm-hmm. being a country or whatnot. Yeah. So, so I think that's important to note that trying to avoid politics is like trying to avoid the air. It's, yes, it's it's not um, not conducive. And I know that it it sucks, but actually it's an, it's an, another part of this thing of. We can we can not want to be part of something, but actually whether we want to or not doesn't matter, it makes no difference. We're part of it. Right. We can mm-hmm. choose to opt out. We can choose not to be part of the conversation, but whether we like it or not, we are part of it. We can say right. we're not into politics so we could say, oh, let's not make it political. But our very existence is part of that. And maybe some people don't like it because they feel like it takes away their, their sense of free will or their, uh, you know, their sense of freedom and stuff. But mm-hmm. you could get into a whole philosophical thing about, well, what is, you know, free will and what is freedom exactly? So right. you know, but I don't want to go into that. I don't, that's a whole no, other episode. You know what? We can totally talk about that in another episode. And we can yeah. talk, like I said, this is your forum. <laughs> I, I, I know that you and I, just in our conversation, we probably have different, obviously we have different backgrounds, different upbringings. You've been victimized. I mean, growing up, I don't see that. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't, ex- I never experienced that. So I don't, I, I have not experienced what, the trauma that you've gone through. Right. Mm. So I have, I have a different political viewpoint, whatever, but that's not, it doesn't matter. I don't, I'm not here to tell you what's right. And mm. I'm just here to let you share what you feel 
is is right in your mind, right? I want you to express yourself, and that's that's what that's all this ep- this podcast is about is about each individual sharing. I'll I'll have the craziest mf -er on here because the more like if they're crazy, the more they more crazy they speak, the more, the less people are going to listen to them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's not you, by the way. <laughs> Just to I'm cool with that. Love, I, was, I love I was, this. Like, I'm gonna be the craziest. At <laughs> I think you and I are heading down the same road mm -hmm. on like parallel streets, right? Just different, mm -hmm. different ways of getting there in a way. Yeah. But you know, I love it. I really, I'm grateful that you even came on. So thank you thank again. You. Yeah. So um, there's actually two, two important points then to speak on with what you've said. So let, just quickly, this anecdote is I, I'm a video gamer. I love my video games, have done for a long time. And I've always enjoyed the imagination, creativity and unlimited access to creativity that video games offers us. Now, of course you could just say, and, and it's, it's, derivative to think that video games are just violence got people shooting people and things like that but there's, there's a lot of mental strategy going into those things no, there's, oh, it's insane i have so much respect for people who make video games it's it's, it's mad mm -hmm. but but there's a game coming out soon in june called the last of us 2 and i think ever since there was even word that the main character was a lesbian and then it started to hush around that her best friend was trans the some of the people in the gaming community got really wildly upset saying they can't believe they're getting forced politics in their video games and they don't want politics in their games. But the irony again from that is there, there are very, very, very few games, very, very few games that have politics in them. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very, like you can think of any war, any war game is political well, immediately by default. I mean, Call right? of Duty isn't really political. I mean, let's be honest. It, it might be a government being overrun, but it's, it doesn't matter what the government is. It's about fighting back to get, get it back right i mean it's not it, really political no but it is it's, it's it's that's exactly it the whole thing is built around that's exactly the point is it is because it's based on politics it's based on the okay. idea of those sorts yeah. of things uh, well based so on being a civilization right and trying to destroy it in a way do you know what i mean and right. and you can yeah you, and it doesn't yeah, matter it's, it's an idea of looking at it's idea of looking at well what politics are you talking about you're talking about a politics of identity not necessarily politics in general so where's yes where's the, yes where's the Absolutely. consistency there right and that that, mm -hmm. that i find sad and funny because again it's this whole thing of what do you mean when you say why are you trying to avoid politics when it's unavoidable what are you doing but but no you you mentioned something there that actually i, I really i think is really important to share which okay. is about the fact that you know you said i I've, I've been a victim and have my trauma i I can say that, yes, I've, I've experienced firsthand racism and I've experienced verbal abuse and I've experienced judgment and so on based on my race. But actually, I don't define myself based on that. And that's not some kind of big overcoming, uh, you know, I got through it. It's actually because the, 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 the level of racism I've experienced isn't nearly as bad i almost want to say the kind of racism i've experienced is the kind of racism that white people complain about when they say when they say you know you can be racist <laughs> towards white people i think that's the kind right. of racism I've experienced. It has i get what you're saying yeah it's like the, i get what you're saying yeah, yeah but so, i, I, so I like not, i said though, you still experienced much more than i would ever have mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. some instant even if it's just subconscious for a millisecond you know what i mean mm -hmm. that first difference right mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it yeah you know? um so so the the i guess in a way what i want to make clear is that i'm not doing this because of my pain i'm not doing this because of my hurt because i i've gone over that and you know i'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine yeah. and actually i realized that i'm incredible i'm incredibly privileged i'm insane it's because privileged. you got over it though that you're doing this too because you can help others um to, and, to an extent no i mean it's would I, I mean, would I, would I still do this if I hadn't experienced those things? I really would like to think so. I really would like to think so because I did, I'm element. doing it. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it's just, Basically what, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm doing it and yeah. I don't need to, this is, I, I want people this. It's so crazy out there. You know what I mean? Mm. I just want people to be exposed to truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think what I want to be able to speak to is say, the, the fallacy that you have to have lived it or you have to be in it or you, it has to be in your genes or in your blood in order to care mm -hmm. about it um, falls aside because I know that people will look at me and think that I'm doing my work because I'm mixed race. And I'm like, uh, no, it's because actually I really, really don't enjoy seeing people being 
treated the way they're being treated. I don't see, I don't yeah. enjoy people screaming in the street, losing their voice, crying and begging for their lives mm. not to be put at risk when they leave their house, for people not to have to suffer the loss of a family member because they were caught sleeping in their car. It, it, and, 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 it, and it's looking at that and then seeing people actively, not, not even not care, but actively laugh and joke about it, which is what people will do and, and say, and they say they right. deserve it. Da, da. That is something that I'd, I'd like to think, whether I was black or white or, or from any, any descent, I would still give a shit because my character is not one that says I've been hurt and I want others not to hurt as well. It's yeah. more a case of I am really, really not impressed. Screw that. That's really, that's such a British way of saying it. <laughs> I'm incredibly pissed off. It's yes, please weird. be pissed. <laughs> I mean, please. I'm pissed off with having to experience the constant subjugation of human life because of the, yeah. and, it, and it, that then comes back to how, and this again was a question I asked. So I work with young people and looking at the way that young people talk about themselves and the, the history that that runs in terms of the hand down of trauma, the, the hand down of mm. poor behavior, the hand down of lack of self care and self love how even at teenage levels, we don't have to be on this planet too long for us to start not loving ourselves and not valuing our own life. And, right. and that I feel becomes a disease that puts us in a place where if we don't value our own life, that we, how can earth can we really give a shit about the injustice of death? Anyone else. Yeah. yeah. Of anyone else in any way, in any yeah. fashion. Like I and I, I speak on this so powerfully, and I, I know that you'll relate to this because when you yeah. have that spark of that moment where you're where you're literally going, fuck, life is so valuable. The ability, the things that you can change and do, the things that you can experience. And in fact, you know what? Fuck everyone else. The things that you can experience, the joy that yes. you can feel, the love that you can get. And yes, it might take work. And yes, that might be hard at times, but holy fuck, is it worth it? Is it yeah, but can we say we'll take work? I mean, I hate the I hate the May thing, you know. Some and and I'm you know, there's some of the you know motivational speakers that they see it seems so easy to make change, right? I wish we were more realistic mm -hmm. about the actual work that's that's needed, right? We're kind of a microwave generation on on, on our side of the pond. Yeah. And yeah. think we can snap a finger and all of a sudden, oh, I feel better. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm rich. You know what I mean? Like and mm -hmm. and, and that instant piece is where I think we get lost sometimes too, because you have to give to get. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm a yeah. Beatles guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the love you get is the love you give. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. And that, that definitely, definitely speaks to that. And I guess you're right in saying it, it will take work. Absolutely. I think I'm, I'm always looking at the, the idea that I don't know exactly where everyone's at. Some people, some people may not necessarily need to do that much work in order to find oh, it. Oh yeah, everybody's on different uh, levels yeah. of the of the path. Well, or, I, I, deliber know. I deliberately say may because um, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe some people don't actually have to go that far in order to. It could be like one therapy session, and they're like, "Holy fuck, do you know what?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that light bulb. Right? All <laughs> of a sudden, they're yeah, like, "Wow, that's changed sweet. everything." You know, but <laughs> but, but but it's it's. Um, it's certain it's absolutely worth it fundamentally and i think actually that's another part that really becomes um a, a question that i want to now ask way more often which is what is your value of your life and other people's lives and what are you doing that actually actively reflects that because certainly in regards to recent times even even with covid as well there is mm -hmm. just a a blank, a massive blank spot where lives are just not valued. And that's either other people's or our own. And sometimes it is our own life, but to a, an extreme extent, which means other people's lives are sacrificed for our own. And I don't agree with that mm -hmm. either. Right. But it's, but that, that to me is still a case of, no, you don't, you don't actually care about life that much because you're so Can busy being afraid of other that? people's lives and wanting them dead that, you can't seem to actually sit back and relax and enjoy yours. So the idea right. that other people dying makes you feel better doesn't tell me that you value your life. It just tells me you're just protecting it, but it doesn't tell me you actually value it. Cause what are you doing? Well, you're, you're barely surviving. You're just kind of going along till you don't Literally. live anymore. Right. You're waiting so, for something I mean, to change. You can relax. It's like, that's bullshit. 
what a waste of time. <laughs> well, yeah, but and, and that's the thing is like it's almost. I, I don't know if you know the adage like you can't love others until you love yourself, kind of thing. Mm. And the less we value ourselves, of course, we're going to value someone else less. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because mm. if we don't even see value in ourselves, to your point, how mm. could we possibly see value in someone who's not even us? Yeah, you know. Well, well okay. So there's there's an interesting nuance to that, and I, I sorry, oh, absolutely. I, I, the nuances that's what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Where, that's where we really get solutions right is <laughs> right. It, in the weeds right in between look, the nooks and companies and stuff yeah i look at i look at this because this this opened my eyes you're right that there's, there's that term you know how can you love someone else if you don't love yourself and there, there's certainly truth in that and that's fair and i think i think that's great grounding in that statement because it says if you really want to love other people really learn to love yourself first so you understand what love feels like and what it takes yes. to really actively do it but codependency is some real shit and i've i've it met people like, and i've, I've sure. been people who keep who who make their self uh, their their well-being and self-care project about the care of others they don't put themselves yes. first and so right. actually they will they will give out this love and they will care a lot about other people and forget that they too exist so actually right. they and, and and people can become experts almost in how to love other people and know how to give their time and energy Sure. But but have they looked at themselves and gone, man, I could do with some of that too? Or have they looked at themselves right. and gone, damn, I wonder why, you know, I, I go to bed. Maybe I'm going to bed tired and upset every night because there's so much more love I need to give and I didn't give enough today. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, actually, and it, it also space. speaks to the variance of the human race, though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I, when you talk intelligence, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, there there are types of intelligence you know you can be you can know every fact and figure or you can have a great memory or you can be totally creative mm. i mean there are different types of intelligence right everyone can contribute to all of us mm. everyone has something they can contribute yeah. in my opinion yeah oh good yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent yeah, every and that that's and that's the thing. I think the other part, and I, I actually don't get so bleeding hearted about this part, but I still have a a, a candle lit for it. Is sure. um, that yes, we do all have something to contribute, and if we're contributing the lack of empathy or the lack of concern over the the lost lives of people, and and the, and the other the other funny fact about that is that we don't. <laughs> We might think that because something happens on the other side of the world that it doesn't impact us. We might think that because something happens to someone right. else, it doesn't impact us. But the rioting right now, and people, I actually saw a video right now, and it was in the suburbs, white family recording like what looked like the army go rolling down their road. They, sure. were, they were on their porch watching this, recording it, and they were shot at. They Are you serious? Seriously, they were shot at. Seen that. Oh yeah. my gosh. So the, so the police actually opened fire on this family on their porch, just <laughs> recording. And I That's... was like, yo, and, and, you know, I'm sure that family were standing there thinking, and I, I, by the way, I'm saying this in no way saying that they, they had it coming because I just, I don't agree with any of, any of that sort of violence at all. Like the idea. That of is a ridiculous. Like, yeah, but, absolutely. But, That's. But I'm sure that now. family thought this is happening to black and brown bodies. It's not happening to us. We will be observers of this and we will do our part in being part of the social justice by recording this nonsense and, you know, kind of feeding the information out there. And then right. they then they were forced to be involved. They got shot at, yeah. and suddenly now it's impacting them. So all of this stuff now, people don't recognize that just because something's happening at distance, that does not mean it does not reach us. When when a person Correct. dies somewhere, someone is impacted at, at anywhere, in the world, right? And well, it has, it has an exponential effect because then you've got hurt, heart, harmed and emotionally damaged people now trying to do their best in the world. And it only slows that process down. So the, it, it, the, we, we like the idea of being able to distance ourselves from these problems and go, oh, that's not, you know, that's not something I talk about. But until we understand these things have an impact on us, whether we like it or not, either we go, okay, we so. it, or we, we have to do something about it. Right, because the world's smaller than it was. Let's be honest. If you look at the Revolutionary War, for example, right, the shot heard around the world took months to get to around the world mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. We've I I've seen you know a, a bad landing. I think there was a bad landing in a San Francisco airplane where it went off the end of the runway. Right. That video was up and around the world in three seconds while it was still going on. You know, yeah. what I mean? was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The world is much smaller, and we need to be much more aware that it's even more vitally important because we're getting so much information and how quickly it, it can be passed around. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, a hundred percent. And and I, I, I guess I don't really know. I don't really know what I'm going to say next. Actually, it doesn't matter, man. That's there's what it's pause. all about. There's a pause. <laughs> well, let's take let's take it. Let's take mm. the pause. Mm. But perhaps, like in terms of what you're saying, the world the world is is yes much smaller, and so it feels. And, and I think this this also ties to um, our senses of what we want. There's there's this the language again that it, it's it's this is nothing new. The concept of someone else getting more does not necessarily right. mean that we are going to receive less. Correct. In, Can't in a this, rising tide lift all ships, right? Kind of you point. Know what I mean, and I I actually do wonder as well. But this this is where you could say it's political. You could say it's a matter of ideals. Whatever. I I did ask myself, what would I be willing to sacrifice if it meant more connectedness and joy for more people in the world? What would I be willing to sacrifice? I don't know what it would be, but yeah. I think some people That's believe that they would have, they would have to, they would literally have to give up the clothes on their back and the bread <laughs> in their cup. I think people right. think they have to give up the water supply in their house. You know, they yeah. think we'll all end up going back to some really weird, you know, um, prehistoric time where, where we all have <laughs> leaves wrapped around our waist and stuff. And I'm like, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, chill out. I, I, I have a solid belief that because of what we've been capable of producing and achieving with all of this trauma and devastation and death, I think that it's possible that the, the human race can actually live in a state of harmony. And I do genuinely believe that. And I'm not saying that uh, in a way that's blind or ignorant to the challenges that will come along. And of course, the people who would be like, nah, that's impossible. That ain't going to happen and can obviously give me the receipts as to why. But I'm willing, I'm willing to be in a belief state where that is possible. I agree that it's possible. I not believe in this that it's... Hell no. No, it's, set, lifetime, it's, it's, I mean, it's set up as a control system. There are a, you know, the one percenters, right? Or the, you know, the, even the one percent of the one percent mm -hmm. that kind of run things mm -hmm. at, in the background that we don't even know. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, gotcha. yeah. We can call, you know, Cabal and the Rothschilds and the mm -hmm. Rockefellers. And I'm not impl in, implicating them, just to be clear, just for legal. <laughs> legal oh, man, but, they don't come for you. They're they're nothing. Nothing. I mean, We're nothing. We're nothing. We're like a fleet. The <laughs> lose. They would be the ones that would lose. So they're the ones that are really holding on to this. They they like the divisiveness. They like us at each other because we're not collectively trying to be better against the whole system in a way. Mm, yes, and 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 there's always more, ends, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's there's more to it than that. And For sure, it, when when we certainly look at the elite, absolutely. But from from where I sit with what I have. Uh, they're untouchable. I'm not. The, to yeah, me, me like, mm -hmm. I'm like they're untouchable. I ain't never going to get near that. And yes, you could absolutely continue to acknowledge that there's a lot of accountability that they can and really should take in regards to their role in a lot of these things. But right, but it's what, up to us to to buck that ourselves. Like personally, I yeah, I buck that. Right, I go against really, the stream. It, but that's also a personality really trait. You know, not mean? everybody goes against the stream, right? No, not everybody's a salmon. And that's no, but, that, no, but this is this is it. This is exactly what I mean. So when we when I I don't want to take away people's freedoms, of course, to point the finger and go, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, right? And no, not at all. It's we'd love to just expose to and then let them choose yeah. what they want. Ultimately. But what misses I feel from that conversation is okay, but does that mean it is absolutely pointless for people to try? and mobilize together and make things happen. We have made things happen on grand scales and societies have changed because people have mobilized against elite form, right? Yes, this might yes, be a, absolutely. A very, a very difficult one, because I think we 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 could argue, and actually I'm, uh, I'm, I'm cringing a little bit at saying this. Um, You're gonna pay now, for it later, sir. No, I'm I just might kidding. Do. <laughs> I feel like what, what we need to mobilize against are some of the deepest rooted problems that human beings have faced and you could yes of course you're looking at um really really horrific capitalist practices you could be looking at incredible like deeply run and insurmountable um 
levels of pain caused in racial injustice and gender injustice and sexuality injustice, all of it. But then you could also look at the amount of trauma that the human race is in as well and go, that's another, yeah. that's another battle that we really need to take on. That's another battle that we need to fight. So when I, when I speak to some young people in some groups, I'm like, we've got to be aware that we have currently been given generations, maybe an unthinkable number of generations worth of trauma. And we're now sat here having to carry that. It's a heavy load to, to bear. And what if we were to say that we were the generation or we were the, 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 the time, the human race in this time to begin a process of uplifting that pressure of yeah. generational trauma handed down, generational pain. And not to forget we it. Have, we point, have the capability the, for sure. Yeah, if we yeah. want to do that yeah. with social media, the way, the way we all communicate now, you know, you and I are literally thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're having a live conversation. Yeah. You know, we have the ability to communicate properly as long as we get the right message, right? Yeah. Or the right you know, ca cause or so, you know, whatever that is. Mm. Um, and then actually, yeah, that speaks to the whole the whole thing you said about the world being smaller, um, which actually means that technically it's easier for these things to happen. But there's one more thing about it's something true. being simple but not easy. And everything right. that, everything that's happening right now is is a reflection of it's simple. But not easy. It's it, correct. And again, yes. a lot of people have said, "Oh, just don't be hateful, or don't be a dick, or just don't be racist." And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and of course, I, yeah, that's very simple. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, so, the, sure. But yeah. as it's demonstrated time and time and time and time again, actually, take getting rid of your conditioned ideas of all of these identifiers, getting uh, like de literally de-educating yourself on certain things that you've learned is I had hard to. fucking work. It's not absolutely. easy at all but again it's worth it because if you sit in a value base of going yes i'm i am very much about equality or no i'm i'm not a racist or a sexist and, that, and if you really really truly believe that you're not just a mouthpiece you know this performative right. thing that just, it's just just to cover your own ass then yeah. it's worth doing because you can at least feel like you're in a place where actually you never have to defend yourself you never have to say it anymore because you're actually not doing it you're literally not doing yeah. it at the very core but it's hard work to get there and that's another thing that uh, so many people don't understand they think that being a bigot of some sort is again like this outspoken violent angry who uses bad words and beats up women or beats or assaults people who are different and it's like no 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 it is an intrinsic form of language it's an intrinsic form of behavior it's it can mm -hmm. be so closely tied to identity that we can be doing something harmful and not realize that it's actually part of who we have become yes and not something that is just the behavior that we take on every now and then and that well, is, is, it is feel they're lose. look i grew up once again middle class suburbia suburb of philadelphia mm. and it was it was 95 percent caucasian right let's just go there mm. i coming when i went to college two thousand miles away you know, I was dry. It was, I was living in a vacuum in a little suburb, suburb town. You know what I mean? Yeah. And being a little bit older, we didn't have the type of social connection or the media connection. So, you know, we were given the only sources we had were the three main channels and maybe some cable channels. Right. Mm. I mean, I'm a generation when music MTV still had music videos on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so it was a different yeah. time. I mean, I'm in this weird place where I've seen so much change in that short time of my life. Mm. Um, but then when I was dropped in, I was a, I was bigoted. I was racist. And I, I would never have even thought that I was, I just was, I didn't know what the correct thing was. Mm. So I had to be corrected, Yeah. but I also had to say, well, I need to be open to being corrected. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's on me. That's on yeah. me to do. Mm. No, absolutely. And, and, and actually I'll join you in that and saying that, yeah, I too, not surprisingly was, was a problematic individual, which is actually why I don't, I mean, this might sound bad in a way, but I actually tend to look more at the things that I did wrong as a form of understanding of how easy it was for me to be wrong about certain things, as opposed to looking at the things that happened to me. Um, yes. Because, yes. because that is a reflection of looking at the systematic processes that are in place that need to be dismantled in order for that to not happen. And again, yeah. I, I mean, I said again, the people I work with, I'm just gonna say it like that now, 
you, Please, can, yes. you, you can rehear it, right? You can, you can just hear that they, they have yet to unlearn certain lessons. Yeah, and, absolutely. They think they willpower, have, yeah. just, you know, you can, you can push willpower all you want, but you when you I mean? have external, external factors like outside racism at you or bigotry at you, yeah. all the willpower in the world is not going to help. No, <laughs> to no. your point, right? No, like no. you, you know, you could talk about, oh, you could take it and run, run that mile, run that marathon. Mm-hmm. You know, those inspirational words that everybody uses, but there, there are some other factors that that are outside of your uh, yeah. realm. Yeah. But it's up to each individual one of us to realize that in ourselves. Mm-hmm. And and I think a lot of people are so distracted with other lot, like you know, just getting through life. Sometimes I'm not yeah. trying to make excuses at all because, I mean, I, I, you've done it. I've done it. We've really looked at ourselves in the mirror and, and really tried to be, become better. Mm. Yeah. And I think th- th- there's, there's, this is one area of why it's worked for us in terms of that openness is a fluidity of identity that we've had with ourself and at yeah. that, like, the sense of self. We both, and I know because of the conversations we had previously, Mark, that we've both gone through experiences where we've basically learned that changing who we feel we are fundamentally has not actually killed us. And we have not actually lost anything worth keeping. (laughs) As a matter of fact, I think I've gained a lot more. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. My sense of contentedness and happiness in my life has changed astronomically since I started the process of recognizing that I could be wrong about some of the things that I say and think intrinsically, not consciously, but intrinsically and and subconsciously. And if I were to change those, actually, it doesn't end me as a being. It makes me better. But but, um, as as a study was done that that demonstrated that when some people think about certain political ideals, some people think about certain elements of, um, of identity, in terms of identifiers such as yeah, like being uh, their race, their gender, da, 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 all this stuff. Sure. Some people actually find that it's so intrinsically tied to them that when those things are challenged, the parts of their brain that consider things like self and yeah. the ID and, you know, all that stuff, the ego, the yep. same part lights up. The same part that considers the self lights up when those things come into our, our presence and into our proximity, when we yeah. hold those things in, of course, the same place. I'm a woman right. that makes me who I am. I'm a, I'm a man that makes me who I am. <laughs> and so yeah. when, when those things are challenged, we feel like our identity is being challenged. And the fear is, if I change that, I lose me. And mm-hmm. only if you get to a place of, of conscious ability to even make that connection, because some people don't even realize that's what's going on, to even make right. that connection, that the fact that the only reason they're upset is because their ego has been hurt because they've taken this thing and made it intrinsically, subconsciously, who they are. Right. And it's so funny, funny they, they're still they... operating <laughs> in that process. Sorry, they're still operating yeah. in that process, interestingly, and construct of your race makes you who you are, your gender makes you who you are. And of course, because right. they're doing that subconsciously, that's then what they perpetuate out into the world, right? I see, yeah. Yeah, and, and absolutely. That's how it happens. Whereas if you come into a place where you recognize your identity is fluid, you actually still have, you always have your consciousness and your sense of self, and that's the continuum. But in terms of your beliefs, which can change, your values, which can change, your ideas, which can change, your opinions, which can change, those things can all be fluid. And as long as you're not making them an intrinsic element of who you are, or at least if you are, you know that they're stooped in a healthy, self-serving and community-serving value, then... And I'm doing my shrug. <laughs> <laughs> we need the little emoji with the guy. Yeah, that right? little, I don't know. Uh, well, to that point, I mean, it's interesting because people, to your point, people think they lose themselves. Well, it, I, I'm going to share, I'll happily share mine. I'm 45 years old. Okay. Um, I had a suicidal, I had suicidal ideations at 40 just mm-hmm. before 40. And I knew something was really wrong. I, I was in this part where I felt like, you know, sheer forces just being pulled in different directions. Right. And I, I was lost, completely yeah. lost. Yeah. I ended up seeking therapy and the biggest thing, like I'm afraid of losing myself, but if we, if we, we look at the moment, right? Like I'm afraid of losing myself right now, but no one's looking ahead to go, but look at the new me that I'm going to gain. Mm-hmm. You know, if, we always look at right what's instant 
to us, right? All I see is my loss of losing myself. Mm -hmm. But if I know, it's kind of like, you know, you lose something because something bigger is around the corner. It's a great philosophy to have. If we always mm -hmm. had, if we all had that philosophy of, I can gain a new me versus yeah. losing the old me, just gain a new me. It's, you know, the other stuff will fall off. You won't even lose it because you'll change. It will yeah. automatically change your whole, your whole philosophy will change. And the old you isn't dead. It just, it doesn't need to be there anymore is the point. It atrophies off. It just falls off because you're a new person. For sure. And I think, I think in that regard, there's, there's something that's spoken to about people who make any kind of change in terms of their social awareness. And it depends on how far they go. So of course you can go so far that you end up on the other end of the spectrum where you might be, you know, uh, let's say far right and your yeah. policies and ideals change and you become far left. The, the anger and frustration and energy burned could be identical and it can still be exhausting. Mm -hmm. There might be some different Absolutely. Um, some different emotions that are felt there, but the energy still is is incredibly powerful. So what I've what I've recognized in many people who openly, you know, confessed to their ways of thinking back in the day and said, Well, I changed and I decided to make things different and I, I you know I started to go down this path. One of the, the, the consistent things is they're always happier, more content, more at peace. Not necessarily peaceful, happy, content, right. but more yeah. so. Yes. Because they, I think, and one guy said this to me, he's a, a, a guy in America who's a friend of mine who, um, who's also, he's also white. He's also said, you know, he used to have his rage and he had his anger and he had his, his bigoted thoughts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But one thing he noticed as he changed and as he, as he grew was the level of tension on his shoulders, on his mind, eased. He has yes. different tensions now, but those are tensions yeah. that actually technically were always there because it was always working in, say, entrepreneurial environments and trying to you know, make something for himself. So that pressure is still there. But in regards to the ongoing constant pressure upon his shoulders of bitterness towards other people, yes. has alleviated... Right. And the energy that, uh, wasted on negative, negative thoughts, yeah. right? Yes. The energy wasted on negative thoughts is just, and that's the point. Like we were talking about the echo chamber thing. It's like they want, if they want you to engage, you're just busy, busy arguing instead of conversing. You and I are having a very open conversation, regardless of whether I agree with you or not, or whether you agree with anything I say, mm. it's just that we're both expressing it. Yeah. And you know, that's really the key to it is that we have to allow people to express themselves. Yes. Yeah. And accept, accept, not accept what they say, but let, they're allowed to accept what they, what they believe. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, can we all just get along? Right. Oh, you <laughs> I know, mean, I, I, what it's about. Well, I, again, I, I did, as I said earlier in the podcast, like there's, there's the element of conversing. And, and I think this is, this is it though. And I think this is the difference between where you have the, the, polarized other ends and i don't equalize them by the way i don't see them as the same thing i know some people go oh the what is it the shoehorn or whatever um <laughs> thing or bell curve i don't know nonsense yeah i, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't see them as the same thing at all and i think mm. that that in itself to me is a fallacy but you can certainly make um characteristic or see characteristic familiarities between the two yeah but does that make them the same no um right but right but um, well, let's. Well, were you talking about the bell curve of the book with IQ and things like that, or were you? Yeah, talking yeah, about exactly. Like that. Book, okay. that book proves well, that's interesting because IQ means and and IQ. Let's just on its face, regardless of whether you think the test, you know, anyone thinks the test is skewed or whatever or biased or whatnot. Mm. IQ is only a mere possible uh, measure of pos of potential. Mm. You still have to do it. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Mm. I I. I have a high tested IQ number, mm -hmm. but I didn't do anything with it. Right. You know what I mean? So what good, what good, what good is that? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I don't care how fucking smart you are. If you can't apply it properly, it, it's, it's all for naught. Literally. There's no point. No point. And I, I, sometimes I see the IQ thing as just an ego thing, to be honest with you. It's, it's yeah. Just, and that's I why I don't, that's why I don't, I try not to, I, you know what I actually, this is what I, this is where I take my, I don't, the IQ thing doesn't matter, but my, my curiosity does. Right. Mm. I always see like the, the desire to want to learn mm. 
is the thing that I think is much more valuable than just feeling like you know stuff or yeah. having the yeah. potential to know things. Yeah is seeking right seeking answers yeah. seeking solutions mm. um so we're about an hour in mm -hmm. i have all day i have i like i said i've had two and a half hour podcasts you did that you know i'll go as long as we want i'm here for you um we're an hour in but do do we want to go into what happened this week and oh, then we, go well, from yeah, there, or, or do you have a couple started. more thoughts you want to talk about? No, we should, because an hour ago we started talking about it, and we never stopped it. <laughs> but, but, Guess um, what? Welcome, welcome to Not Conscious, my you know friend. I, mean? <laughs> I, I have um, a feeling we're going to have a couple of these over the years, and, and it's going to be like this. So, <laughs> All right, so Daniel. Yeah. We are, like, like we said, we're, uh, we're about an hour in, and uh, we want to talk about some more things. I am, you're welcome on the program anytime you want. So if you're, if there's some, let's talk about what you specifically want to address now. Yeah. In the short time that you have left. And then we'll have another one of these in a couple, in a month or so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Well, well, so, so, okay. Yeah. Talking to, talking about George Floyd, which is what took place earlier this week. There's. The, 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 it feels really, really, really bad to, to speak on this in the way that I will, but I really want to say it. Um, but first, but first, because actually I want to end on a high and I know people might listen and go, there's a high. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, no, I'm going to say this. First of all, that it, it, it's not surprising that that happened. Not at all. But it still fucking hurts. It's fucked up. I mean, really? two years ago, two two African Americans were shot within a week of each other, or in the same week. Mm -hmm. and I remember the girlfriend recording it yeah. lot on Facebook Live, right? Yeah, uh, jarring, J absolutely. I, I don't know how Ferguson, right? Wasn't you know? Oh, it just, so it many. I, it's relentless. And look, I'm, I'm flabbergasted because I don't know. I don't know what I can. You know what I can do. Mm. Someone tell me what I how I can help, please. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So, so what, <laughs> all right. No, no, no. Fine. 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 So, what what has been what has emerged? Um, and I think I want to say this has emerged in my sphere recently. But actually, I'm sure this conversation has been around for a long time. So, what it is is when people say they're not a racist and so on, right? Mm -hmm. That's not actually good enough. No. That's, no. Not, good, that's not good enough. And. <laughs> No, not and at it's all. Not, it's, not, it's not that it's not good enough because people are like, I'm not racist, but blah, 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 right? It's actually because what needs to be understood and recognized is that the status quo in itself perpetuates uh, prejudice. Yes. The way, th the way things are naturally occurring, uh, naturally, the way things, things have been designed by humans to be yes. is prejudice, right? Yes. And it has so, to be because it's from the viewpoint of the people who created the system. Hello, right? So to say you're not a racist, you know, and I'm sure people don't expect everyone to stand up and clap and applaud them and kiss their ass, but it's just, <laughs> it's not enough. And this really spoke right. to me because it's actually not about being not racist. It's about actively being, and thankfully I, um, I'd already taken this on, but it's still something that I look at and go, right, you know, I really, I want to make sure that I'm doing this as well. It's about being anti-racist. Because to say you're not a racist is like a neutral thing. It's just like, okay. Right. You're just a thing. You're nothing. You're just yeah. you're neutral. You're blank. You're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. Um, you know, you could you could have to, people to not, who, who have to like hundreds of about it. It's like white bread, right? It's like white bread. It's just yeah. plain. Right? Yeah. Just vanilla ice cream, right? Or yeah. just chocolate or just yeah. plain you know, nothing, you know, no flash to it's, it. it. It's like, I, it basically it says, I'm not racist, but I'm also not doing anything to change that. And that's right. what I, that's you're what I recognize. You're not, like, you're not helping the cause. You're literally doing nothing not then. being an asshole or not right. being whatever. Yeah. So you know? it's about and being it's absent about. is worse. I think right. being absent is worse. We should all be interactive in our lives in a positive way. Yes. You know? Yeah. The, the inaction is worse because it just basically means that things continue to go the way they're going, which is why we're right. still we're still seeing riots. We're still seeing right. black men being killed um, unjustly murdered in the street in front of people. And people and, and the guy did it. With his whole chest, he saw people were recording him. He stared the camera right. in the eye and murdered a man. And mm -hmm. literally, you're you, you're thinking, well, of course, in a way, this is. Well, I'm thinking, of course, this is still happening because there are so many people out there who are proud to not be racist, but ain't doing shit right. about it to change it. Well, well can I ask this question? Enough. 
thinking that that's all it takes. And it's like, no, no, right. no you, need to be, you need to be anti, actively anti these things, which means right. call it out when you see it. Don't let your friends, your partners, your loved ones, your family allow those sorts of things. If you think people are going to make a joke or they're making a joke about it, don't let them a joke about it. Call them out on it. Yeah. Sit them with it. Have, have, that's You know what? When people say we shouldn't be rioting, we should be conversations, that's where you have the conversation. That's where you yeah. sit and talk to people. Not when they're yeah. angry, not when they're filled with rage, not when not when they are crying, screaming, and, and honestly in a place ready to destroy things because they are out right. of options. That's not when you well, have not, a conversation. Not after the travesty's already yeah. happened, right? Hello. You have to be proactive, Hello. right? Exactly. And, and to, to your point, and obviously George Floyd was an African-American. Mm-hmm. How many... And, and I, I just want to say, you know, because I don't know his background per- personally and where how he grew up and everything. But how many non George Floyd's are protesting? To your point, right? Where they're they're passively sitting in their in their house watching these demonstrations. But I'm no gonna, one's yeah, no, no. I'm gonna that, I'm gonna right? get in. I'm gonna get into that next. Okay, but, please. Um, but but no, this is. This is it. I mean, I'm only answering your question because you asked, and it's a really important question. How can I do this? And that's that's part of working towards being an ally. And I, I want to speak to the fact that when I say being anti-racist, it's important that people don't suddenly think that they have to get all angry and up, you know up in arms and they have to Come pull on their bandanas and down the tree and right? throw a bottle at someone. No. And, and yeah. if they and if you believe, if you're listening to this and you believe that it takes place through conversations, that's how you do it. That's how you get right. anti-sexism, anti-racism um anti-prejudice that's how you get it those conversations with the people that you trust you can have conversations with. because i've i've also seen debates take place on the internet you know these people who have debates about politics and race and stuff and again it's to me it's performative because in debating as debating is, is conceptualized there's got to be a winner you know you get points for debating a certain amount yeah which means that it dismantles the purpose of a debate because it means that a debate takes place where someone is better than the other. And that means right. there's a loser. But if you're trying to have a conversation about something, there can't be winners and losers because that immediately instills this ingredient that requires the other person to back down. And that right. is not the state in which you have a conversation. Right. right. And you and I, and you and I, to your point, you and I see some things differently, but mm-hmm. we're, we're both having a conversation about it. Mm. I'm not going to lose just because you believe something different. No. No, and I and actually I don't I don't feel like I certainly hope you don't get this from me, but I don't I don't I'm not saying all of this with the a, attempt to change your mind because one thing I I'm have learned. Gonna, no, is, you just have to. But but if I don't know something, I need to at least see it before I can process it. I mean, if I if I if it's under if it's like a carrot that's underground, you have to mm-hmm. pluck it out for me to look at it. I can't. You know, you see things I don't for sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because also I understand in everything that I've said so far that, yes, there are people out there who don't want to listen, who, who maybe want to listen, but don't want to listen to this. They don't want to hear it right. this way and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, yeah. okay, that's well, fine. Them. I'm still, I'm still going to say <laughs> it. I'm just... still going to say it. I don't, it doesn't matter that right. it doesn't matter that you don't want to listen. Someone will, right. but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say it um, in a way and if people think I'm trying to change their mind, that's not on, that's not, I'm, I'm giving people every right to go, I don't believe things like that. As you've been doing, we have a right to disagree. Absolutely. I'm not going to jump on that and go, no, you must agree. Like, <laughs> you can right. go away and obviously do your own work and have, find your own path. That's fine. Um, absolutely. So, so yeah, the conversation is absolutely that. When you, I think when you add the term debate to me, to me anyway, when you add the term debate, the way that I've seen it conducted um, in certain spheres has not been one of an open sharing of information it has been a case of who's bringing the best information to the table and again when you put in best information to the table it instills a sense of competition and if you're talking about this thing everyone loses everyone loses that's right there's no win with this kind of stuff so and and it's even beyond competition it's more of a combativeness i mean i'll use i'll our presidential debate, quote unquote, debate loosely, right? Yeah, yeah. You get 30 <laughs> seconds. You get thirty seconds to yell at somebody, and then get thirty seconds to get yelled at. I mean, that's it does. You know I mean? That's not a fucking debate, people. That is not a conversation. <laughs> not all, man. No, it's yeah. not. So you know, they, 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 that's it's a good ridiculous. point. I speak to it exactly. That's what I speak to. So no, that that's it. Now, um, I'm actually, I'm actually wanting to round things up here. Yes. In terms of the the George Floyd circumstance by saying that everything we've talked about here stands true and real and yes. 
as I work through practicing boundaries, practicing where I put my energy and where I absolutely certainly won't, and that's in, in terms of keeping a keen eye out for people who say they want to have a conversation but actually want to have a debate. Um, people, <laughs> who say, people who say, you know, teach me about this thing and then immediately start bringing their own facts to the table when they're clearly not listening to what you have to say. People who openly want to troll. Learning those boundaries, because of course, if you've got a, a finite amount of energy to put in, and we do, by the way, it's like, it's, um, what is it? Emotional stamina is very real. Right. Real thing. Well, we have, we have like, say it's like a hundred, right? You 20% goes to your 20 points of the hundred points a day, go to your, to your, to your wife or your, mm -hmm. your girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, 10 points go to work. You know what I mean? I mean, you yeah, like yeah, to yeah. point, you, it's, we are limited. I mean, we can't be unconditional and infinite. We just no. aren't, we're just no, naturally we limited. So, um, which again, we will we'll put a pin in that point for when we talk about sure. free, freedom and and free will in another episode. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right? we'll do that for sure. We're instinctively <laughs> limited, um, but but um, yeah. So I carefully measure that. Um, so everything I've said stands, and everything I said is true. What I what I still want to point out among all of the other things, and it's only because I've only seen in all the posts I've seen. I want to leave it to other people who have the energy and the spare time and, and place to be able to, to have those discussions, arguments, debates with the people who are not willing to see it or are trying to learn, right? Okay, mm -hmm. fine. What I still want to speak out on is you actually, and I thought you were going to go a different way with it, but you didn't. Okay. Fine. Hey, but take, take terms, us a different way. I love it. In terms of the protests and rioting right now, what I'm actually seeing is it's not, I don't even know this is the first time in the US where this has happened. I don't, and I actually don't know, and I want to look at this. I have not seen such a mix of people protest and riot like this. And it, yeah. to me, what gave, what the, the, the slither of hope that actually I'm feeding as much as I can right now, because it feeds what I believe, it feeds what work I do, it feeds who I speak to, and it feeds the purpose of what I do, is that, what this message has sent is that this is no longer a black people's problem. And actually, I will say it never was a black people's problem because black people just... It never was. It, and then it white people decided it to go, hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spanish it's not white a, people it's like, not a um, specific, actually, let, yeah. right. <laughs> let's make this a problem. It's a different problem or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or I feel, you know what it is? It's a, it's a lack of just the humanity part of it, right? Let's be honest. It's treating, treating someone like an animal. Massively. Regardless well, of... Arguably, are, you know, yeah, yeah. arguably better than animals, but that's again another right. conversation that we can have, which I'm oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> sure, but um, but yeah, the, the level no, the level of diversity at these riots and protests actually has turned it to look to look like a civilization problem, a collective people problem. And it mm -hmm. is not, it is, it's taken away from this element of it being black people are upset because something happened to black people. People are upset because yes. it's happening to black people. And that yeah. is where I actually, I actually want to end this because I like, I, I like ending things on any grasp of dregs of hope I can, because I think it's, <laughs> Absolutely. it's important that we acknowledge all the shit that's going on. But if, if I'm able to go, okay, this is this is a direction where I where, because I have the privilege to be able to stay distant from that stuff. I therefore can use that privilege to at least find something that is worth fueling out of this. Mm -hmm. um, because actually, I know a lot of people will come out of this riot and shit going to change. It'll be the same damn thing. And they will feel like they've just been screaming against the brick wall. And right. I could either spend my time empathizing with that to the point where I do fuck all. Yeah. Or I can go, <laughs> yeah, well, no, seriously. Or I, can no, go, right. I, I, I laugh because it's kind of like, it's funny because it's true, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, one yeah. of those weird things. Or I can go, right, I have the energy, the time, the freedom to be able to make fucking change and do some shit. So where can I do it in every facet, in every corner that I can to make sure that that person who suffered has not suffered in vain, that their voice that they've lost from screaming at police, at, at, at anti-protesters and stuff, has not lost their voice for nothing. What can I do to ensure? And and it, just in terms of fueling that action, I looked at these videos and I'm seeing what's going on out there. And literally, it is not just black people who are upset by this. It is. But that's what's great about it. That and I and think that powerful. I think that shifted from that that week that two African Americans were shot. I think that was about a year or two ago. I think it was probably maybe two three years ago actually. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, you know, we're, we're, wa- you know, waking up a little bit mm. as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real quick, what I like, what I always talk is like, we talk about tribalism, right? Obviously, isms, right? Mm-hmm. Tribalism, you got your group. Well, to your point, simple, not easy. Why is our tribe not human? <laughs> why, why, why is it not us all together as one tribe? Like, we are human. That's, that should be our tribe, you know? And, but yeah. we it, that's, that's, that's separated oh, in little smaller groups. That goes, yeah. Well, yeah, there you go. I was going to say that goes into another another conversation piece. Absolutely. Um, I mean, once again, simple, not easy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, yeah, yeah absolutely. We're exactly the same. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost virtually impossible, but you have to consciously be make that effort, though, in my opinion. No, you do. You do. Until it becomes unconscious effort. Um, exactly. You know, and, it's like performing, right? Yeah. Well, we've, we've been taught how to devalue human life. Um, and it's in our entertainment. It's in our, it's yes. in our, well, it's in our video games and everything. We, it's in everything we consume. Yeah, it's in everything yes. we consume. So we would have to do the work to be conscious of when we experience the loss of life of another human being and know that that, that was a whole human being. That was not just someone separate from us. And in some way, shape or form, that loss of life will come to impact us some way. Yes. It will. So we, um, we want to unlearn this dehumanization and the, the the desensitization of seeing people die and specifically and I, I actually made this point recently as well that that um it was funny how back in the 90s you know the mtv era as you mentioned yeah it, it got into the early 2000s as well there was this sure. meme meme that you know the black guy always dies first and it became a joke <laughs> right it did yes right so we yeah. we actually then Got or the token black guy, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we the, then yeah, got absolutely. conditioned to laugh at the death of a black person. Yeah. Or a lesser person. Uh to even go back further. Uh are you familiar with Star Trek? Like the original Star Trek? I'm gonna say a perceived lesser person. Just I know what you meant, but I'm just gonna y- Yes, perceived lesser. <laughs> uh, I apologize. Yes, I don't mean No, I know what you mean. Like, don't worry. Yes, cool. Yeah. I just wanted to, but, you know. <laughs> Star Trek, right? Whenever they had like a, you know, they were beamed down to a planet. There's always that random lieutenant guy that you're like, that guy's getting killed first. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? No, no, exactly. The disposable character. Yeah. And now they've changed that to, to your point. You know, you're saying the black guy gets killed first, right? Now mm-hmm. it's in, it's like ingrained in the fabric or woven in the fabric of society yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, we, I, I think we're going to talk forever if we. And I know you have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So feel free to expound however you'd like to finish this. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and we'll definitely have another conversation, I hope. Oh, God, yeah. No, absolutely, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to go at this again and go into more stuff because there's so many things in terms of the limit of our energy, in terms of how there are direct examples of how animals are given more rights than minority um, groups. And indeed, we can talk about the intersectionality of these problems, because while the context right now certainly does speak to um, issues between white and black people, and actually, to be honest, I'm actually going to say black people in the world, um, there's there's so many areas to discuss in this, um, but this, this has actually been a good opportunity. Thank you, Mark, for letting me let me come on. I really appreciate it, man. Well, I thank you because I mean, how, how we just connected. It just, we, we had one conversation prior to this and it was just very fluid. And I know we're, I know we're different people, but I guarantee we would, we, we could hang out and have a great time. Yeah, and that's sure. what it's all about. In spite yeah. of our differences, we can, we can have a drink, we can have a meal and we can hug it out. Right. Yeah. Like I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, do you have any final, something you just absolutely need to share that we can get recorded for you that you can make a statement and close it out and then I'll, I'll we'll finish it up and we'll be good to go easy this is a people problem this is not a black people problem this is a people problem perfect well said <laughs> so uh daniel we're going to close it out for this uh thank you so much for joining and 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 taking your time because i know it's your weekend and you know we like to have a free weekend so thank you so much can you tell us everything about your information your website your your podcast i i believe it's on buzzsprout but uh please share all that information and then we'll call it a day cool so 
the uh, best place to follow me is on Instagram uh, at the only other Dan. And I do a few videos over there, just sharing a few nuggets every day. And then Excellent. my website is www.daniel-holly.com. And it's H-O-L-L-E-Y. I'm sure you'll have it all written in the description. As well. I will. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And actually we'll do that. there, um, it's very, very brief, but that's because as a coach in this field, I my power comes in conversation. So you certainly can actually have, there's a resource you can download there if you're looking for some personal coaching work to kind of improve your own life and get things going. It's very straightforward, very simple. You can download that for free and start working on it. Um, but then the podcast is called the Social Cohesion Podcast. And the whole purpose of that is I bring people of more liberal values, of values that reflect the equality and empowerment of every individual on this planet onto the podcast. And I coach them through a conversation and so it's experiencing what it looks like to be coached by me. That's awesome. I love it. And I listened to a number of them. I probably listened to five, a good five, a good half of the ones you've had out there, I think. And there, it's interesting when you get to that epiphany point, that little <laughs> little light bulb moment. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Ding, oh, that's where it is. You know, so <laughs> thank you again for coming. Once again, it's Daniel Holly, H O L L E Y, yeah. Social Cohesion Podcast on Buzzsprout. Is that right? Oh yeah, sorry. You can find it on Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Oh, and excellent. So yeah, you can go to Buzzsprout, but yes, you can also find it on those platforms. Pardon me. Social cohesion, everybody. Pay attention. Once again, this has been Not Conscious. Daniel, thank you so much for being on here. Thank and you, um, I, I know we'll have a, more conversations and I'm, I'm in a, I, I can't help but say I'm blessed to even have crossed paths because I would never have met you had I not had probably had you not had a podcast had i not started one I mean, <laughs> how would we have met any other way so sure. thank you um thank and you. everyone out there in uh in in the world thank you so much for uh joining us and we will uh have another podcast with daniel in the future i hope yeah for sure let's do it let's do it my friend thank you again and everybody uh if you need to contact me it's a www.knockedconscious.com Thanks so much, and we will see you guys all later. Once again, that was my interview with Daniel Holly from the Social Cohesion Podcast. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of him, just look up the Social Cohesion Podcast. He's on all major brands, iTunes, Spotify, etc. Once again, this is Knocked Conscious. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day.